This video is going to be a quick look at how Aaron Glenn and the Lions defense have kind of shape-shifted or, or changed colors, uh, whatever uh, phrase you want to use, apply it, to apply it, go ahead and do so. They had four sacks and 11 quarterback hits in Sunday's win over the Vikings the week before, two sacks and eight quarterback hits against the Broncos, dominating home win. A lot of it is these safety blitzes. I covered it, I think, the best that I could in a video that I put out last week about Brian Branch and FAI2 Melifonwu. Other guys being used as blitzers as well against the Broncos that didn't really get uh, shined like that or utilized in that manner yesterday in the win against the Vikings. I'm going to just briefly cover some of the nature of these blitzes, where they're being used on the field, and maybe when is also important. So I'll try to read out the down and distance, and you'll be able to see the location on the field. I'll try to give you the, the quarter so you have some idea of what the score is. I think it's interesting. Aaron Glenn received a lot of criticism, probably most of it uh, justified for being too conservative, too vanilla, uh, whatever people want to call it. What's interesting to me, at least from my knowledge, you feel free in the comment section to correct me where I'm wrong, what I thought the judgment of Aaron Glenn had been initially as defense coordinator was that he played a lot of man and put too much stress on his DBs and then kind of maybe swayed too far in the other direction. And now maybe have a little bit more course correction back towards who he is. I don't know how accurate that summary is, but that's what my brain thinks when I heard fans make comments in comment sections originally last year. And then as this year developed, it seemed to be that he was being too vanilla, too conservative. They weren't getting pressure. Well, now in the last weeks, you've got last two weeks, you've got 19 quarterback hits, six sacks. And a lot of them are by Brian Branch and if I had to Melifonwu. Josh Pascal had one last week. I don't think Aiden Hutchinson has a single sack among those six sacks in the last two weeks. I don't use that to criticize Aiden Hutchinson, who I would like to see get to the quarterback more, but I digress. I use that to illustrate that Aaron Glenn is now, I think, manufacturing some of these situations. Let's get to the film. I'll briefly remind you a little bit about last week and where and when. These stunts were used. This is Melifon Wu's first sack, the force fumble. It's the Broncos' first possession. They've reached the 20-yard line. Fortunately for the Lions, they were able to hold them scoreless until the offense got going that fourth, fifth, and sixth possession. Remember, the Lions stacked together three touchdowns to go up 21-0. Just your typical safety blitz off the edge against 12 personnel. Where they're blitzing to stop the run, simultaneously blitzing to stop the play action. And in this case, Melifon Wu gets there. He seems to have a knack for stripping the football out. He did it again yesterday against Mullins. It was ruled a, um, it was ruled that it was not a, a fumble, so the the Vikings were able to retain possession of the ball. This is going to be a double corner blitz. So this is fourth possession. So Vildor and Sutton blitzing off the edge, and. The combination of the two, what it does is it, it forces someone, the running back in this case, to pick up one of the corners, and then Vildor is wide open. Kind of like this three-under, two-deep coverage that I think they played against the Bears, or maybe it was the week before against the Saints. I think I even commented on it at one time. But it's under center. Now the Broncos are back on their own side of the field, the negative 25. So you've got no pattern in terms of when they're blitzing so far in this video. But I think over the course of seeing the stunts or blitzes, the DB blitzes last week against the Broncos and this week against the Vikings, where it's happening on the field, I think you will see a little bit of correlation. So this is a brilliant one, man, that you know I covered in the other video. Branch and Joseph is going to drop out. Melifon Wu. A lot of these safety blitzes is through the B gap. Now, this one ends up being A because it's inside of the, the guard's gap in between the guard and the center, dropping out Hutchinson to the field. I know that I know. I have not seen a four-under, two-deep coverage from Aaron Glenn in 2023. Maybe there was one against the Bucks on a play-action concept where I thought a linebacker red run and just continued on his path. So really, it probably should have been a five under two deep, which is your more typical cover two. What I'm saying to you guys is there's some real evidence of a large sea change in how they're calling defense in certain parts of the field in certain situations. This is a fifth possession, so we're still talking first half. This is during the second quarter when the uh, Lions really took over and took, a, took that 21 nothing lead. Moving forward, last one from against the Broncos, then we'll get to the Vikings film. Uh, this is going to be branch on the blitz from the nickel position down here to the field. 
It is a second and 10 shotgun, so drastically different. But all the ones except the first one have occurred when the ball is the negative 50. So meaning it's not on the lion side of the field yet. But credit to Aaron Glenn. He used it on the first possession against the Broncos to thwart that possession when the Broncos seem to be on the move. When Brian Branch hits the quarterback, man, it's a it, it's almost like a D-end hitting the quarterback. There is some real force and impact. Uh, I could see quarterbacks getting injured in the future from that guy, and that's not wishful thinking. That's just reality. He just comes from such depth and with such commitment and force. All right, so let's move forward to uh, the film from Sunday, which is what you guys tuned in for. I'm just trying to illustrate to you where these blitzes are being used, when, and then who and how. So Melifonwu on the initial sack of Mullins. This is first quarter. All three of the ones I'm going to show you from Sunday's game is, is in the first half. This one's different. He's not going in, on the inside B-gap or A-gap. He's going off the edge, being isolated against the running back, and he's just winning. He's just winning against the running back. I think Brian Branch could do this. That, that, that goes without saying. Brian Branch can do anything. He can probably carry the football. But I don't know who else on the Lions team does this in this manner, and I mean linebackers too. I mean, I mean, Alex Angeloni is just a baller, so I, I would not discount him from being able to do anything. Barnes and Campbell, Rodriguez played well yesterday, by the way. Those guys are fantastic football players. I think the world of them, but Malafon was just straight winning here against a running back. I haven't seen too many guys do that. I just haven't seen it this year. Maybe you remember other ones uh, that I don't. End zone angle, same play. It ends up being a 12-yard loss. We all thought it was a fumble. Um, initially, the refs apparently correctly ruled that it was not a fumble. A couple of situations in the game where I think the Lions had a real opportunity to to get more separation. Well, fi- could have finished the game with the uh, the forced fumble by Romeo Aquara that Kaminsky is unable to recover. Man, what what can Melif- what's Melifonwu's like ceiling at this point when you're talking about C.J. Gardner Johnson coming back this week? How do you take Melifon Wu off the field? There's just there's got to be some creative manner in passing situations, and that's not necessarily one of them right there. That was a second and four of of keeping as many of your talented guys on the field to be unpredictable. I think that unpredictable nature is what is really driving this Detroit defense in the last two weeks. Yeah, they did give up 24 points to the Vikings. You no, know, I'm not saying they played fantastic, but they're making big plays. And that's what you wanted to see. I think that's what all of us wanted to see, them be more aggressive, them uh, stop giving up long touchdown drives with the same coverage being played over and over again. In this case, fullback and right tackle take Hutchinson, and Branch goes right through to B-gap and stings the quarterback on the release, another forced fumble. Those turnovers or those opportunities for turnovers are game-changing, especially when your offense plays like the Lions did yesterday against the Vikings. I'm of the opinion that the um, the Lions offense was really in control throughout uh, that game, other than the the near fumble that was returned for a touchdown when Goff just gets the football off. But interesting look here, if you ask me, that you've got wide DNs. Jack Campbell is off screen here. Rodriguez, you can see, stacked. Branch is out here. There is a receiver who ends up being wide open. I'll pull it back to the all-22 so you can see it. You're basically trying to cover three or four with three. This is the same play, by the way. I didn't cover it the first time. So you've got really it's four receivers here. You've got the bunch and then the fullback. Branch is going to go, and you can see the receiver. I think it's Osborne ends up wide open. But Mullins has already looked down to the bottom side of the field. Why? Because of the pressure. He knew he had to get rid of it quick. And that's the point with what Aaron Glenn is doing, not giving quarterbacks as much time. Maybe it's not Aiden Hutchinson uh, finishing with 10, 12 sacks or, or Bruce Irvin getting you know more sacks or more opportunities to even get on the damn field. Or Justin Houston, again, ended up with 8 or 10 sacks. Maybe it's Melifonwu, Branch, Anzalone, guys like that getting to the quarterback in a way that disrupts the defense, excuse me, disrupts the offense's flow. Last one, this is late second quarter. Now, of course, the uh, Vikings are able to overcome this. They get the 26-yard touchdown pass to Justin Jefferson to pull within uh, 17-14 at the half. But again, another example of Melifonwu just has a knack for getting there. And at this point, I don't know about you, but I feel like got to give Aaron Glenn credit. He's dropping guys out inside linebackers and bringing safety DB pressure. And it seems like they do, they're really understanding the pass protection schemes that offenses want to use 
in particular situations because these blitzes are working. It's not guesswork, if you ask me. They recognize, they being the coaches, and then the players on the field recognize the situation. Now, do I think the running back can handle this a little bit better? Uh, Sure. But pre-snap, just to isolate it a little bit, you got a four-on-four or with the Lions, and then three offensive linemen, and the one running back, I think, is Chandler for the Vikings. If there's any problem up front there, and all four of those guys blitz, you've got to open you know, personnel in terms of the blitzer. So Aaron Glenn's committing enough people to get there. It's only a five-man rush. It's not like he's bringing six on every play. Chandler has looked for work to the right side. I'm not sure that these guys communicated it great. Maybe it's that Aaron Glenn wasn't doing these things as much until recently, And so offensive lines, fullbacks, quarterbacks even, are less prepared for these situations right now. That's a possibility. I don't know that that is the complete description or gets to um, all of it in in its totality, but right now what he's doing is working in terms of getting pressure on the quarterback. If he'd been doing this all season, would teams be more prepared for it? Sure, of course, they could be. However, that could change their play calls because the quarterbacks know I don't have as much time. And so credit to the staff for the Lions. Have to give credit to Aaron Glenn. If I ought to Melifon will, I mean, if you had told me a safety in the past two weeks would have would have put up an interception, I think three sacks, two force well, one force fumble, the one yesterday didn't count. I'd say, well, that's Brian Branch. <laughs> it's Brian Branch. And he certainly could do those things. I thought he played spectacular Sunday, even though he did get beat twice in the second half on coverage situations. The fact that it's Melifonwu, a guy doing it, and it's Aaron Glenn kind of changing his stripes or, or shifting what he does, I think it's I think it's really remarkable. You're welcome to tell me you know, what your perception of it is. I understand people are, and, and rightfully so, want the Lions to finish the game. Up 30-21, uh, you do end up getting the football twice and not able to generate points or possess the ball long enough to close it out, and the Vikings have an opportunity. No problem. I still have to give Aaron Glenn credit for figuring out a way to change the dynamic of pass rush versus coverage. Were it not for Justin Jefferson yesterday and his brilliance, I think you're talking about a really one-sided football game where the Lions had, at least in my my eyes, if you were to pick the top 10 players in that game yesterday based on how they played just in Sunday's performance, I think six, seven, or eight of them would have been wearing the Detroit Lions uniform. I appreciate you guys' time. Let me know what you think of of this look at just the DB safety blitzes in the last two weeks and trying to make an overall point that Aaron Glenn does deserve uh, some credit and some praise for recognizing the problem, lack of pass rush, and trying to address it in a way that the Lions staff thinks they can because they weren't able to go out and get a high-level pass rusher or James Houston isn't healthy for whatever reason, Bruce, Bruce Irvin hasn't played the last two, or didn't play this week, excuse me. So they're generating pass rush in the manner that is available to them right now, and I think that's what coaches do. Appreciate you guys' time.